yeah, pretty good there. Well, how y'all are? This is your buddy George Jones over here at the Bergen Gun Range with my next my next video on products of a tortured mind. Yeah, that's it. So I bought a box of junk at the flea market that was relatively firearms related. And in that box of junk was a pretty good uh, pretty good bullet mold to make 150 grain lead round nose 30 caliber bullet now I'm not sure if I shot these on the channel before but we're going to talk about it a little bit, a little bit more in this in, a little bit better now. So I loaded these into 30 odd sixes. They're 308 diameter. They were 309 when they come out of the mold. Uh, I swaged them to 308 because sometimes when you buy those plated 30 caliber carbine bullets, they're not perfect. So I bought a swager to run them through and make sure they were 308 before I put them in. Tried to install them. Um, I got to looking for a loading for them. And I found one for the no longer available cowboy action shooting powder, which typically thought of as a pistol powder, um, Trail Boss. And I had about a half a can of Trail Boss. So I weighed what I had in the can against what the loading was giving at 1150 feet per second. And I thought, let's do it. So here we are at 1150 feet per second with uh, <laughs> lead bullets for 30 odd six loaded with trail balls. Put us a few in there and see how it worked out. This may be a product of a tortured mind, or it may be a great idea. Now, YouTube doesn't like for me to present actual reloading, you know. Uh, it's against their rules. Now, people do it and get away with it, okay? There are small channels and smaller channels than mine that uh, do reloading. And of course, if you're like Larry Potterfield, you know, you can reload everything you want to because you're a big money advertiser. Or you can build an AR-15 from scratch, you know, because you're a big money advertiser. But me, I'm just one of the little guys, you know. I have to do the best I can. If you're familiar with the Bergen gun range, we have a series of steel targets at 25 yards. First one I'm going to shoot at is the steel silhouette that's, I don't know, he shot it so much it's starting to warp out of shape and look like a turkey platter. But we're going to shoot it. I'm going to shoot it and you're going to ride along with me. Let's see what it shoots like. And it hits. Woof. Boy, it ain't a kitten either. But it has no recoil. No recoil to speak of. No recoil to speak of. Well, it about like an AR. You know, out of a 30 odd six. It really warps that target. That poor little thing's used to getting shot at with a 9mm. Alright, let's try a smaller target to see how well they shoot. There's the little triangle. Oh, yeah, this was a good idea. This ammunition is a pleasure to shoot and shoots pretty good. All right, tank plate. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that shoots good. It's good shooting stuff. 
Barrel ain't even good and hot yet. All right. Let's see if I hit the little one down there, the little 10 inch bottom of an oxygen tank. Yes, sirree. These shoot rather well for what they are. And what they are is an improvised boat. So you see these guys out there, they're shooting black powder out of a high-powered rifle, or they're making nine millimeter loads out of black powder and blah, blah, blah like that. Trying to see if they can shoot their own homemade powder at the end of the world, you know, and bullets made out of toothpaste tubes. So, if you've got a good mold and you've got a good swage and you've got a good scale and you've got any reloading skill at all, you can make a pretty good lightweight, I call it a gallery load, for 30 odd six. I think that's it, yeah. All right, let's put five more down there. Five more down there. Oh, we got one. Oh, I don't think I can hit that with a 22 rifle, but we'll try it. Hit the tire. Okay. It it's it's good load. It shoots good. Well, this is a 25 yards. You know, they come out of there pretty good and they hit pretty hard. I wonder what this would do to a groundhog at about 50 yards. All right, let's try the other end tank plate on the right. Yep. I didn't think it'd shoot with a crap, just to tell you the truth. Oh. Uh, that was my honest assumption. I didn't think it'd shoot good at all. Eight inch Mickey Mouse hanger. Let's see if I can hit it. <laughs> yeah, I broke the chain on it. Okay. We're just sitting here working our way through a experiment that <clears throat> seems to be successful. Question is, that was a piece of railroad rail. Question is, what's it going to shoot like at 100 yards? Well, okay. All right, that's the big question you all got on your mind right now. So let's adjourn from here and go down to where I can find 100 yards and we'll try it. So well, here we are at the 100 yard range. And I'm taking the best opportunity I can find to make an absolute fool out of myself. Um, I don't know. These guys shoot pretty good at 25 and 50. Let's see how they shoot it. So. Get about five in there before the camera gets hot and cuts off. in good shape right that very moment. What are we doing here? No. When I get done with it. All right. All right, 125 yards, 100 pitch grain, round nose lead, hard cast bullet, lubricated with lubeloid or analox. Yeah. All right, here we go. It hit it. I think it hit it. There's some dust coming off, off the ground. So I'm going to say that I hit that big steel plate. Let's try it again. Better draw down, Alvin. So, this.
this is a 150 grain bullet traveling at about 1150 1200 feet per second so in theory what i've created is a 38 special with a 158 grain wad cutter <laughs> so, so, it's about where we're at ballistically I hit it that time. I seen that lead come off of it. Yes, sir. This may be a good idea. I can't turn the camera around because then it'll face directly under the sun or on the sun side. And when it's in, it's in a little shadow here. You know, I'll keep it relatively cool, keep it from cutting off from the heat. Oh, yeah. Don't hit it real hard at 125 yards, but you can hear it hit it down there. I'm, or I can. I can hear it hit with the earmuffs on. With my ear suppressors. Ooh. Got target swing. I'll have to get five more tries as long as I got some camera left. I didn't intend to make a video. I was going to come over here and test these things and see how they work. And then maybe make a video about it. And I got to thinking, well, I should turn the damn camera on and make a video. My subscribers and supporters demand content. And they're a rough bunch, buddy. <laughs> Don't twang it good and hard like it does on the 25 and the 50 at 125, but you can hear it hit up there. Come back here. You see, if it says peace, you buy them once fired. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Most of the time, if I shoot this rifle 20 times, I'd be pretty wore out by now. Now I'm not. Let's see if I can hit that one. Oh, I didn't hit it. It's one of those square plates in the frame. All right, all right. I can't have everything. This ain't exactly a precise science. All right, back to steel swinger again. I can hear it hitting it, it just doesn't go wham it like a, like a, uh, well, like a 150 grain match bullet would. But, it works. Alright then, that's about the size of it for this installment of Product of a Tortured Mind. Like, take, share, pie, commentate, and subscribe. Leave me a dollar in the Patreon bucket if you want to. And if you don't, I keep right on making content for you. It's hot outside, summertime. Check on the old people, whether they're your relatives or not. An old person living alone on your street, go by and knock on the door every once in a while and say howdy. Make sure they got food in the refrigerator and they got air conditioning in the window. If you ain't, see if you can get them some help. Call somebody. Old people are too proud to help themselves sometimes. And they sit in their apartments and their houses and die. And a lot of people that call themselves good citizens ignore that. Get out there and get her done. God bless America and God bless each and every one. We'll see y'all when we see you. Bye now.